Could Dallas Cowboys quarterback Dak Prescott return in just four weeks? All that and more this episode of the Locked On Cowboys podcast. You are Locked On Cowboys, your Locked daily Dallas Cowboys on. podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Locked Network, your on. team every day. Locked On. Locked On. Locked, Locked On. Locked on Cowboys. Welcome back to the Locked On Cowboys podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We want to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. We are free and available on all platforms. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. All you have to do is pick two to five players, and if they score more or less than their prize pick projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on your entry. First-time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code locked on. That is prizepicks.com, promo code locked on. I am Marcus Mosher. You can follow me on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosher. He is Landon McCool. Check him out on Twitter at McCoolBCB. Landon, what's going on, sir? Doing well, you know, just trying to get through this and uh, and deal with the aftermath. Uh, but I'm glad that we got an opportunity to chance to talk together about this because you know it's better than being alone in our heads with it. That's for sure. Did you? <laughs> how did you feel this morning when you woke up? Was there still like this, you know, doom and gloom? Were you feeling like even one percent better or no? Yeah, I mean, you know, I don't know. For me, it's. I, I took all of yesterday to feel terrible and then I woke up and it's a level I'm in the acceptance level, I guess of where it is now. Right. Of, of, uh, of grief. Uh, I've, I've skipped fighting it or any of that stuff. So I, I think I've reached a level of acceptance of what's going on. I'm not thrilled about it by any stretch yeah. of the imagination. Uh, yeah. But I, like I said, I'm glad I, I honestly, it, I'm glad to have the opportunity to, to talk about it with all y'all because it, it is therapeutic on some level. Uh, all right. So let's get into the latest Dak Prescott injury news because that's all that really matters right now. A little mm. bit of a timeline, right? So Dak Prescott had his surgery uh, yesterday afternoon on Monday. The expectation was that he would miss somewhere between six to 10 weeks. Tom Pelissaro from NFL media this morning said, hey, there's a chance that he could be back closer to the six-game frame, maybe start practicing after four After four weeks. Jerry Jones goes on 105.3 The Fan and says, hey, we're not going to put him on IR. Maybe there's a chance we get him back closer to four weeks. Is there any chance that the Cowboys get Dak Prescott back in four or five weeks? I, who knows, man? I mean, you know, it's like I think that – I think that, that that they're doing this, you know, uh, uh, to kind of open up practice windows. I don't think they're doing this to like give him the opportunity to try to play earlier than six weeks out. You know, um, I, I don't know. I, I think it's it's more about the situation where they looked at it and they're like, it it might be worth it to not necessarily need to give up the roster spot and then just if they can even get Dak on the practice field even a week earlier than than if they had put him on IR that might be worth it that doesn't necessarily mean that he's playing you know 5 weeks from now or or you yeah. know less than 5 weeks from now i guess in that situation uh, i i think it more has to do likely with uh you know, opening up opportunities for practice windows. And look, if you want to buy into the idea that Jerry is doing this as a, as a sales job, feel free to believe that. I mean, that's, there's, I mean, I, he certainly will turn anything into uh, a yeah. potential sales job. I, I tend to think it's more to do with, you know, giving them the most flexibility to get Dak on the practice field sooner um, and, and throwing the football once he feels comfortable doing that. Yeah, so Drew Brees had a – because, I, listen, I did so much ridiculous research on this yesterday, just trying to figure out, like, comps for this. Drew Brees had this injury in 2019. He ended up missing about six games, seven weeks with a bye. Came back and played fairly well the rest of the season. Um, so it, I think there's a chance that he could – that could miss six, seven weeks and come back and play well. It's just – for Dak's sake, I don't want them to rush him back. Like when he comes back, I want him to be healthy, right? Because yeah. what my fear yeah, yeah. is that 
they're this is going to end up the same way that happened with Tony Romo in 2015, right? Where Jerry Jones talked about, hey, maybe Romo could come back in six weeks, and we just got to survive that time. And once he's back, we'll be ready to go for the playoffs. It puts so much pressure on Romo that he ended up playing one game and then getting hurt again. And then that season was completely done, and you wonder if it ruined Romo's career. I, I don't want that for Dak, where he comes back, he looks bad, and he's out there, and he's putting his thumb in a vulnerable position. That doesn't do anybody good, right? Yeah, I mean, I think these are all, you know, things that they'll have to get weighed, uh, you know, as he gets closer to throwing the ball. I'm sorry, I laugh because you, you, the way you pronounced for Dak's sake, it, <laughs> it was like, well, I'm just saying, like, like you were it's... subbing in a curse word for Dak's name is there. And, <laughs> for Dak's sake, why can't they get it together? It's, it, well, no, it's just, I, 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 I don't want it to feel like, well, hey, Dak, we absolutely need you to come save the season. And if you if you come back and you play poorly, it's all your fault. Like, well, first of all, Dak. I mean, let's let's not take the agency out of out out of this for Dak. Dak wants to come back sooner than later. Oh yeah. Pretend. Yes. Let's not pretend that this is Jerry like staring down on him, saying you got to work. And Dak's like, I don't want to come back. No, like, it's not Dak, that. But I I, can I see understand it. your thought process. I can see they, they need to protect where... Dak from himself to a it, certain degree. It, and this. that's the biggest thing. I think Dak would play in two weeks if they let him. No. Yeah. Uh, I don't want that to happen. I, I also think that this is not as comparable to the Romo situation simply because I do agree that there are negative consequences to rushing him back early. I, I certainly agree with that. I don't know that there's a career defining element of rush, uh, running, r- rushing him back here. You know what I'm saying? He could, he could hurt himself again and then maybe miss more time. I don't know. That's going to, you know, have a long-term effect like, like Tony's back situation was. No, but, but I, the- I don't want it to be where the thumb it's it's playable, but it's not completely healed. And now it sure. breaks it again. Now we're talking about like serious long term consequences. Like that's what you don't want to have happen. Sure. Yeah. And I and and you definitely want to make sure that when Dak's back, he's he's all the way back. You know. And it's you know simply because look, I mean, he was healthy in that game for most of the game and played poorly. Yeah. So you certainly don't want to like if he's kind of dealing with some non-injury related game stuff you certainly don't want to have him come back and then try to rebuild confidence while injured you know that's right. i think that could be a problem I, I think that i think Dak's having a confidence problem and i think that that's could be compounded if you rush him back too soon and he's not playing at the level that he's expecting uh that that could really that could really cause even more issues on that on that area yeah of his game uh, I think if the Cowboys were smart, they would try to line everything up. And actually, one of these guys will play sooner than the other. But try to have Dak, Michael Gallup, and Jason Peters all healthy and playing well by like week 10, right? If you could do that and you could have three, maybe four wins by then, I mean, we could talk ourselves into having them having a chance in the second half of the season. Not a great chance, but a chance. I, I just don't know how realistic that is. Yeah, I mean, I think, look, we need to take this one game at a time at this point. I mean, honestly, like looking ahead is, is at this point, especially with the way it is right now, it's it's going to be bleak. And and to be honest, we don't even know how accurate any of our projections forward are. I mean, for goodness sakes, one week the whole landscape of the NFL changed for us, and it may change just as drastically next week. So. Uh, I think the way it is right now, we need to kind of be like the Cowboys probably are right now and just focusing on what's happening in front of us, seeing if we can get this win and, and just try to stack wins where we can let the Dak situation play out. We'll obviously check in regularly to see where he is in, in that. But I, I think if we spend too much time obsessing over, you know, like the the timelines of guys that are eight plus weeks, six plus weeks out, uh, and, 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 you know, when they're going to get in, we're, we're going to make ourselves crazy. The Cowboys need to win the games that they have in front of them. They cannot obsess too far ahead because they need to get whatever wins they can. So that by the time the deck and them get back, there's something left to play for for the rest of the season. Okay. Uh, all right. Let's get to some of your tw- Twitter questions. But before we do that, I want to tell you about prize picks. Uh, Price picks is so much fun and so easy to do. All you have to do is pick two to five players. If they score more or less than their prize pick projections, you can win up to 10 times your money on any entry. No competing against other people. It's just you versus the projections available. 
Prize picks offers projections on any sport you watch. This includes NFL, NBA, MLB, NHL, PGA, college football, men's college basketball, women's college basketball, soccer, WNBA, esports, NASCAR, tennis, MMA, boxing, disc golf, Euro basketball, cricket, and more. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's just that easy. They are currently operational in over 30 states and in Canada. Download the Price Pick app or go to pricepicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code locked on. If you deposit $100, they're going to give you $100. If you deposit $50, they'll give you $50. Don't forget to use promo code locked on at sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100. Also, I want to tell you about Athletic Greets. I actually have some. Right here. This is a product that I use every single day. Absolutely love it. And it has a very mild tropical taste that I actually look forward to uh, having each morning. So what's in this stuff? With one delicious scoop of AG1, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins and minerals to help start your day off right. It costs you less than $3 a day. You're investing in your health, and it's cheaper than your cold brew habit. In fact, it's cheaper than going out and buying all the supplements yourself. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. All it is is one scoop in a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NFL network. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash NFL network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. All right, Landon, let's get to some questions. This question uh, is, we got a lot of them, but from, from Brandon, what is the one move that you would make right now to attempt to salvage the Cowboys season? I'm torn between signing another veteran receiver or maybe kicking the tires on some viable backup quarterbacks. I mean, I, I don't know that like one move is going to save the season. Um, I think, you know, look, if you wanted to like kick the tires on, on, on a, uh, on a wide receiver situation, if there's something that, that you feel like can upgrade the situation that can fit in your cap, that seems reasonable. Uh, I don't, you know, <sighs> I, I, I certainly don't want to trade for a quarterback at this point. Um, you know, we can see what's available out there and 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 and, and look at it. I think the timeline of the, of the injury is obviously going to play into this quite heavily. Um, but for me, like, I, I, I just don't know that there is a huge benefit to um, trading for a quarterback. If you want to go sign somebody, you feel like that you could bring in, and maybe in a couple weeks. After, after being on the practice squad or, or, or kind of getting into the offense could come in and, and be an upgrade and rush and maybe help you win a game or two. Uh, you know, I could be convinced there maybe. Um, but I also think that, that, you know, giving up valuable assets at this point to salvage a season that, you know, I mean, it, it may not, not be salvage, salvageable, salvageable yeah. by, by whatever move you make. And now suddenly you're giving up assets that could become more valuable as the season goes on. I think that that's that's not a good that's not a good idea. I, I again I, I would point out the idea that, um, you know, the offense was struggling even when Dak was there. So I don't know how you know adding a different quarterback that you're going to have available to you um, necessarily will make that a lot better. Um, maybe it will. You know, maybe you know because honestly, Cooper Rush came in and, and and was able to find some success. Obviously, that was uh, had to do with a lot more of the change of defense that was being played later in the game, but. I just don't know that like trading assets uh, for a quarterback makes a lot of sense. I think you could, can, you, if you feel like you could upgrade the wide receiver position, that makes some sense because that has long-term value beyond when Dak gets back. Uh, but, you know, again, I don't know if, I don't know if the, any of the angles of, of that have really changed since week one, to be honest, because as I mentioned, you know, dis despite what a lot of people were saying, a good portion of what was happening on, on Sunday wasn't because the wide receivers weren't getting open. It was because the wide receivers weren't getting the ball when they were open. So uh, we, you can add more wide receivers there, add more firepower to help uh, a backup quarterback, and then obviously still have that uh, that firepower when Dak gets back. But 
Uh, I don't know that like this has prompted you to be willing to give up more assets to trade for that for that kind of player. Do you know what I would do if I was the Cowboys here? Is I wouldn't trade for a quarterback. I don't even think I'd trade for a receiver. I'm just playing the young guys. Like at this point, yeah. like I and it's I know it happens so early in the season, but like I want to see Sam Williams more than Dante Fowler. Dante Fowler's not going to be here long term. Play Sam Williams. Play Jalen Tolbert. Like I gotta know. Like I, I gotta know on these some of these young guys, so that way I can develop my plans for the off season. And I, it's it's not so much. Hey, we're in rebuild mode. We're in total evaluation mode. But I'd rather have those guys getting valuable snaps now than wondering late in the season what they still are. So keep Tyler Smith at left tackle. I want to know. I want to know by the time Dak gets back if he's the actual left tackle. Or is he a guy that we have to move into guard because he's just not going to be able to hold up? Like, that's the kind of stuff I want the Cowboys to figure out in this kind of like transition time. I think you just continue to develop the young kids, you know? Yeah. I mean, let them take their lumps while the rest of the team is taking their lumps, and hopefully they'll be better for it. And by the time Dak gets back, maybe some of these younger players are now actual contributors and, and key players on your offense and defense. Uh, and suddenly it's changed the shape of the team. I mean, the whole point, again, from we've been saying since the beginning of the season, the whole point is to kind of ramp up into begin, being a better football team. So you still need to allow your team to do that. It's it's going to be harder without Dak. Sure. But but I think it's still – you don't just give up on that plan because by the time Dak gets back, he'll need those players to develop some uh, if the Cowboys are going to do anything with the opportunity they have on the back end. I'll, I'll give you another player, Tony Pollard. I actually think with the way that the offensive line was playing in week one, Ezekiel Elliott was the better option. He was, I mean, he wasn't great in pass protection either. He gave up two pressures in eight snaps, but like, I need to know on Pollard, like, is, is he a workhorse back that I can, that I should pay after the season? I think, you know, my answer, but like, if we go through this whole season and we've seen Pollard start two games in his career, how can you justify paying that guy this off season? Like, I, I'd rather just be like, Hey, Pollard, you're getting 20 touches this game. Let's see what you can do with it. Like that's the kind of stuff I would like to learn about the Cowboys over the next few weeks. Yeah, and I think that that's you know hopefully we're going to learn a lot more about those guys because the onus is going to be putting on a lot, put a, a lot more on those guys than it would be with with uh, Dak around. Yeah. Uh, all right. Let's get to some more questions. But before we do that, I want to tell you about Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all of your pro and college football betting needs and sports info this season. Find all of the latest football league developments, game matchup news, and podcasts, including this year's opening week uh, two lines, which you can go check out right now. BetOnline is your, also your continued source for all of your sports wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. It's the fastest and easiest way to check in on all of your favorite sports and events, including NFL, NBA, MMA, boxing, and golf. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action Bet online where the game starts. All right, next question. A lot of people want to know about CD Lamb, Landon. Are you concerned about CD Lamb? Yeah, I mean, he needs to see. Certainly, he needs to play better for sure. Um, I, you know, I, I would say that I think he he did some good things in the game, but he didn't get the ball. I, I saw at least two times when I saw him streaking down the middle of the field and, and would, you know, if the ball had gotten to him would have scored long touchdowns. Um, you know, and there was definitely two or three times when he was open and the ball got thrown to him, but it was off the mark or behind him. And he's got to catch some of those, some of that stuff, yeah. but it's also got to get to him. Right. You know, and like, and, and it's hard to make huge plays when you're uh, having to make adjustments to even get to the ball. Um, I think CD lamb needs to play better football for sure. Uh, simply because they need him to, and they need him to take that kind of step. And, and that's, you know, he's got to be that guy. Um, I, I think and, people are getting frustrated because, for a couple of different reasons. Like they saw Justin Jefferson this week for same draft class as CD lamb. He got lined up against a linebacker on like 23% of his routes and he got wide open. And then AJ Brown in his first game with the Eagles goes completely off. I mean, is this a CD Lamb problem? Is it a scheme problem? What do you think is going on? I mean, I think the, it's 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 never one of those things. It's it's all of those things, and it's 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 the combination of them. I think, like I said, I think CD Lamb was getting open. Like I, it wasn't like he was 
completely covered. I mean, let's be honest, guys. Like, CD Lamb didn't face almost any double or triple coverage in that game. Almost none. So this, like, you know, this idea that, like, they weren't scheming him uh, uh, opportunities. Like, dude, I, I don't care if it's a cornerback or a safety. Like, if you've got one-on-one situations and you're CD Lamb, you got to take advantage of that. Like, and 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 I don't just mean CD Lamb. I mean the the offense. I mean the quarterback. You know, so uh, I I think that there is certainly something to the idea of like getting more opportunities to kind of scheme him into situations where he's you know going against a linebacker or a, a, a safety. But but I mean. Yes, beyond that, like you still have to win when you're going one on one with the cornerback and safety. And there was just not enough winning in those very basic situations, uh, you know, for, for what this team needs. Uh, I, I'm, I'm all for kind of trying to scheme him into better situations, absolutely. But, but even then, like if you're not being double or triple teamed and you're the kind of caliber of receiver that, I mean, the expectation is that you are. You gotta win those. You gotta win those one-on-one routes. You gotta make teams pay for for covering you, single singling you up on a corner. And and yeah, well, he wasn't really he or and or the offense was not really able to take advantage of that in the game. I I just think I'm chalking everything up to that game. It's just a bad game, right? They didn't play in the preseason. They they had some injuries on the offensive line. They lost two starters. They just it. Everything that could have went wrong went right, more wrong. And we saw this happen for a couple offenses, like in week one. It's not uncommon. This has happened in back-to-back years for the Packers. They scored three points last year and what, seven points this year. The Bengals had five turnovers in er, at home against Pittsburgh this week and lost. Like The, the Rams look terrible. This kind of thing's happened. It's just... I, I- it's- it's frustrating think, that they won't be able to fix it right away. That's what it is. I, I, th- I think that the real thing that we're all experiencing more than anything else is that Dak played a terrible game. Maybe one of the worst games he's played uh, in two or three years. Uh, yeah. And, and we, and he got then, and then he got injured. So not only are, is, is we're going to have to deal with the fact that he played terribly. We're not going to be able to get that taste out of our mouth until he's healthy again. And you know, even so then, now, it, it, even then, it might be a few weeks until he shakes off the rust of that, right? Yeah. So, I think that's what we're all dealing with. The fact is, is trying to come to terms with the fact that, um, you know, the one thing that we didn't really account for, or we were hoping we wouldn't have to account for going into the game, was bad quarterback play. Uh, and then after having watched it, we don't get an opportunity to see him redeem himself. You know, kind of like we know that he can um in, in in any kind of soon timeline we're, yeah. we're having to wait with the injury so uh, you know we uh, I, I think it's easy for us to kind of fall back on our priors and fall back on our narratives and blame whatever it is that we came into the game blaming uh but i i think that the cowboys offensive situation you know it's 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 more than one person that 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 is sure. at fault there you know everybody has their share when offense plays that poorly Last question. Uh, this one from at jbay31. Uh, I, I see a lot of people ask us, should the Cowboys consider replacing Dak Prescott? That's that's ridiculous. That's not going to happen. They can't even do that, right? Like, he's got so much money. But question from jbay. He wants to know, on a scale of to 1 to 10, how worried are you about Dak Prescott's play over the last eight or nine games that we've seen him? An eight, a nine, maybe. I'm, I'm worried, man. Like, I, I look, I mean – I have been called the biggest homer in Cowboys football <laughs> Twitter for you know by by many people. Uh, I don't know how you don't watch that game and not get nervous about. It's not just the game. It was. It's that it feels like Dak has had a couple of these in the last few times we played. It's been easy for us to continue to chalk it off as injury, um, and and this time he was completely healthy going into this game, short of a blister on his foot which he should mm-hmm. be able to overcome. And he didn't look right. He didn't look, and, and it's not like a health physical thing. It's a not being confident, double clutching the ball, hesitant to throw the ball, throwing the ball late into coverage when the guy was, was open before you decided to throw it. Uh, it's, it's, it's being late with the football, not being in sync with the offense. I, I, I tend to think that you might be right that a lack of preseason maybe 
could be a problem. I'm kind of shocked by that, to be honest, just because it wasn't really a problem in the past when they did it uh, last year. And I feel like they got a ton, a ton, a ton of snaps against first teams in those practices. But it's hard not to, to look at what uh, what is going on and, and not view it as, through the lens of a quarterback who doesn't look like he's in sync with his offense. Starting to wonder if there's just like a shelf life for quarterbacks and offensive coordinators together. Like you see this across the league, right? Like take the Rams. Sean McVay and Jared Goff look really good together for a year and a half. And then all of a sudden the bottom falls out, right? And Sean McVay's offense is really good, but it kind of teams get a beat on what you're doing. Even somebody like Patrick Mahomes, as great as Patrick Mahomes is, he really struggled last year. Like his passer rating was like a 92 because teams just kind of have an idea of what you're doing. And I wonder if we're in that stage a little bit with Dak Prescott and Callum Moore, where they've been together for so long. Teams know exactly what to expect that there's just no – you're not deceiving anybody. You know, there's, they kind of know all the little tricks of the trade by now. I just, I'm almost wondering if the Cowboys, even though I think Cal, I, I still think Cal Moore's a good offensive coordinator. If a divorce might be in both parties, best interest at the end of the year. I, I maybe, I don't want to rule out anything, so I'm not going to poo poo anybody's suggestions at this point. Uh, but to me, to me personally, I saw things that were working. It wasn't that 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 the offense wasn't working. Right. right. And I'm not and I'm not again, I I really still believe in Kellen Moore. I just yeah, wonder yeah, if sometimes yeah, yeah. relationships expire a little bit. Maybe that's it. I I honestly do think that I don't know if that I think that there's something going on with Dak's confidence level because if you go back and go back, just go back and watch the, 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 the tape. If you guys have the opportunity and every single time that you see Dak clutch a football, meaning load up to throw, pull it back and then load up to throw and throw it again. Right. Go back and watch the game. And every single time he does that first load, imagine he actually threw the ball and imagine, and then look at where the wide receiver is in relation to the defender and tell me how, how much space there is. I, I just think that there, there are things that are working but but Dak is and the and or the receivers, it's hard to tell at times, right? They are not completely in sync as to the timing of everything. So I, I certainly think that there is a possibility that there's shelf life. I, I your your theories are all very sound to me as well. I, I think that what happened specifically in this game to me seemed like a uh, like a disjointed team. offense, you know, like yeah. like like a group that wasn't operating inside the system well enough. Well, and that's about, that's coaching too. That's oh, definitely coaching. Yeah, too. but uh, at the same time, if you think back to last year, like, I mean, Dak has been playing with Amari Cooper for most of his career. He's been playing with Michael Gallup most of his career. Dalton Schultz and even Cedric Wilson has been there four years, and all of a sudden, it's a third year CD Lamb, Noah Brown, who's never had a big role, Dennis Houston, an undrafted free agent, Semi Fahoku in his first game. I think those guys were getting open, but for some reason Dak didn't trust that they were in the right spot or he just was a little bit hesitant. Like I think a perfect example is that Noah Brown pass that was behind him on third down, right? I think I think Dak thought Noah Brown was going to sit. Noah Brown goes up the field a little bit and they're just off by, what, a foot? And I think those are the little things that you just – you learn and you, you know where guys are supposed to be after playing with them for, you know, several dozen games. Yeah. I and, mean, and again, like maybe, maybe this gets solved with another week of practice. If Dak was healthy, right. Maybe he comes maybe. into Cincinnati and plays great, you know, but I, I think that there is something to the idea that Dak is struggling inside of this, his own offense. And whether that's uh, whether that's the timing of the routes themselves with the wide receivers uh, or whether that's Dak not delivering the ball on time. That's, or maybe he's pressing. I mean, I think that's part of it too. I think he knows, hey, I don't have the receiving core that I did before. I got to make plays, right? I feel like it's the opposite to me. Like it, it's it's that he's not pressing. It's that if you go and watch – look, we, we gotta, we're about to go, but if you go watch these games, man, like there's so many times when he chose the dump off over the deep shot. It's the, the guys a good were, point. And, there's guys that were open. CD's streaking down the middle of the field. Like, 
you know, and 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 he's getting to it. He's thrown to the outlet. He's thrown to the. And you're right. That is comfort. But it like, man, we cannot chalk that up to new wide receivers. If a guy's running, flying down, you gotta give him the ball. Lamb, you gotta yeah. get him the ball, man. Right. Like, so I. I he's just not know. seeing the field clearly. It may- Maybe this will be the best thing for him a little Maybe. bit. So sit, sit back and watch the way the offense is supposed to go and say, see, okay, he can see it from the sideline. Hey, this is where the ball is supposed to go. I've got to make this throw. We'll see. But I think you're right. Like, There's games where he's looked really good, like the Eagles game in week 18 or whatever last year, the Washington game. Like You see it. But then there's games like that first Washington game where I have no idea why he threw that ball to Cole Holcomb and they almost lost that game. Like some of the throws, it just, I don't know. It's strange. It's, it's, it's a strange part of Dak Prescott's career that I'm not sure what's, what's going on right now. Uh, all right, Atlanta, we got through, <laughs> we got through some questions. It felt like some good therapy. Uh, thank you for making Locked On Cowboys your first listen every single day. Now make your second listen to Peacock and Williamson NFL show. Brian Peacock and former NFL scout Matt Williamson give you the NFL, the expert NFL analysis in less than 30 minutes. It's free and available wherever you get your podcasts, all the same places that you'd get the Locked On Cowboys podcast. You can follow Landon on Twitter at McCoolBCB. I'm at Marcus underscore Mosher. We'll see you guys next time.